This is the bonus epilogue to Night of the Nymph by Bianca Dark. Copyright 2023 by Bianca Dark. All rights reserved. At the estate in Nebraska. Crystal was practically bouncing up and down with nervous energy. Today was the day. Her cousin Sonny, along with Dennis, her cougar shifter mate, were coming to visit. They were bringing Sonny's adoptive parents, Marilissa and Herman Stockton. The meeting had been planned for the past couple of weeks, and Crystal was excited to finally meet an actual blood relative in person. It would be a first for her. Having grown up in foster care, Crystal had never known where she'd come from. She had never had any relatives of any kind. Now, all of a sudden, her lonely life was overflowing with love and family, her own newly discovered relatives, and Marco's family, too. Philomena had gone home to Italy after the excitement, but she had returned along with several other Strega relations of Marco's. They had come to check out Marco's new bride and his newly gained power to walk in the sunlight without fear. They were also planning a gigantic wedding with a feast to follow. The local wolf pack was also involved. Most of the wraiths had gone home to Wyoming, but a few were still on the estate helping beef up security and training some of the locals. It seemed the two alpha wolves, the local pack leader and the wraiths leader, had formed an alliance. Marco, Crystal knew, was happy with the outcome. He was pleased about forming closer ties to the wraiths leadership, both for the strategic help they could be in securing the estate and because one of Crystal's cousins was mated to the Wraith Alpha. Marco was all about fostering closer connections on Crystal's behalf. He was such a considerate mate. He wanted her to have family, and he was willing to share his own with her, as well as sharing her with her own newfound family. Marco had a generosity of spirit that was unmatched in her experience. The longer they were together, the more she understood his feelings. She could hear echoes of his thoughts already, and he claimed that, as time went on, they would eventually be able to share each other's minds. That thought might have been scary with any other person, but Marco was the other half of her soul. She looked forward to the day that they were that close mentally as well as spiritually. Crystal was waiting on the front steps, peering down the long driveway, hoping to catch sight of the car they had sent to pick up their visitors at the local airstrip. The werewolf pack had taken care of all the arrangements, but Crystal found she could not wait serenely inside the house. No, she was too excited to just sit around. Finally, the stretch limousine Marco had rolled out just for this occasion showed at the end of the drive. Crystal was down the steps and shifting from foot to foot as it approached. Then she schooled herself to calm down. Marco came down the steps to stand beside her and put one arm around her waist. Relax, my love. You have spoken to Sonny many times over video. You know you both get along splendidly. This is going to go well, he told her, kissing her hair in a tender gesture that really helped calm any residual fears about not being liked in person. I'm just nervous. I never had any family before. I want her to like me, Crystal admitted in a tiny voice. She found it easy to speak her deepest fears to Marco, as she never had been able to do with anyone else. He understood her on the deepest level possible between two people, and he never judged. He was amazing in every way. She already does. And you already like her. Have no fear, he told her, giving her waist a reassuring squeeze. Then the cars were pulling up in front of them, and the doors were opening. Sunny was on this side of the car, but a big man who must be her mate stepped out first and looked around. He nodded to Marco, and Crystal was aware of Marco nodding back. Then the shifter stepped aside, and Sunny stood from the vehicle. Crystal rushed forward as Sunny did, and they met in the middle between the two men who watched indulgently. They hugged like the long-lost family they were, and happy tears were shed on both sides. When they finally broke apart, Crystal saw that Sonny's parents had come around from the other side of the limo and were waiting behind their adopted daughter. Sonny made the introductions. "'We're very pleased to meet you,' Herman said, shaking Marco's hand. "'Thank you for the invitation.' "'You're very welcome,' Marco replied cordially. "'I hope your trip here was pleasant.' "'Very,' Marilissa responded, smiling up at Marco. She had a kind smile, Crystal thought. This place is so grand. 
The house is lovely and the grounds. Marilissa looked around her in wonder. It's a bit overwhelming, if I'm honest. I didn't expect anything quite so elegant. I hope you like the rest of the place, Marco said kindly. We've been renovating ever since I took ownership, but it still needs more work both physically and magically. Crystal liked Sonny's parents right off the bat, and she also was very conscious of the way Den looked after Sonny. It was clear that he was devoted to her, and Crystal liked that very much. He was a tall, silent, sun-kissed blonde who would have intimidated Crystal just a few weeks ago, but now that she was with Marco, her confidence was at a whole new level. The six of them went into the house and paused in the entry. I know you've had a long journey, Crystal said, addressing the group. Would you like to see your rooms first and take a breather or have a little tour of the place? Or if you're hungry, we can grab a bite and some coffee in the dining room. What do you prefer? A consensus was reached that they'd like to pause for a snack in the dining room, then have the tour before checking out where they would be staying for the duration of their visit. They'd have time to decompress from the trip after the tour and before dinner, which worked well for all concerned. When they arrived in the dining room, the lunch crowd had cleared out, but the buffet was still available for stragglers. Den made up a huge dish, but Crystal didn't even blink. The man was a shifter, after all, and she'd gotten used to how much they all ate. Apparently, big cats were the same as wolves in that respect. When they were all seated, the talk turned serious. "'I'll be blunt,' Herman said, leading off the conversation. "'My wife and I are both from large and very old magical families. However, our kind of magic and our philosophies don't mesh well with their teachings. They marginalized us early on, but luckily we found each other and realized that there was a place for us and the kind of magic we do. We became the eccentric recluses of our respective families. We bought a small ranch and invited a very select group of people who were in similar situations to ours to come and learn and get a short respite from the pressures put on them by other schools of magic. Your magic expresses itself through art most commonly. Is that not so? Marco asked politely. That's it exactly, Marilissa replied, smiling. We focus on many forms of the visual arts. We've had sculptors, painters, jewelers, even weavers and embroiderers come to stay with us. The one thing we all have in common is that we can imbue magic into whatever we are making. Most often we make items that carry protective spells within the fabric that will help anyone we gift them to. Although a few of our students have gone on to sell their art, even a mage has to make a living somehow. Marco was nodding. I have seen this sort of magic in the past, on both sides of the equation. That's one thing we demand of anyone who studies with us, Herman rushed to assure Marco. They must be servants of the light, using their magic only for good. We will not tolerate anything else. That is precisely what I wanted to hear. Marco replied. I'm not sure how much you've heard about this estate, but there were many objects here that were imbued with evil magic. Until Crystal arrived, I had thought the place cleansed of such items, but her special kind of magic revealed that the rest of us had overlooked quite a few things, including an ancient artifact that can connect this realm with one of pure evil. Marco looked at Crystal. They had decided ahead of time what to share with these people. If this works out, Crystal said, you should know that there is something here that we have become the default caretakers of that must be kept out of the enemy's hands at all costs. That sounds rather dire, Marilissa said, a little frown between her eyebrows. Marco sighed. It is, but we have no choice. An artifact was left here that is simply too dangerous to let out of our control. Perhaps, some day, we can come up with a better way to dispose of it, or hide it. But for now, it has to remain on the estate, under guard. We are very closely allied to the local wolf pack. They have been running security under guidance of some of Jesse's men. These people knew Jesse Moore well, and probably most of his people. The wraiths were well known in shifter circles for their unmatched military prowess and stealth skills. 
Although we didn't mix much with shifters before our sunny met den, we are all friends now. Marilissa smiled fondly at her new son-in-law. I don't foresee any problems working with werewolves. We've been staying with the Wyoming pack since our ranch became unsafe. I think they must have told you already that we can't go back there. The bad guys know where we live now, and it's just not safe. Herman shook his head with regret. Sonny told me, Crystal said. I'm so sorry. Everyone was silent for a moment before Marco continued. So, essentially, what you ran was a clandestine school of majory. You serve the light, and you take on only a small number of students that are carefully curated. I believe this would be a good fit, and could even help protect this estate into the future. Marco paused for a moment. I have to warn you, though, that the bad guys, as you call them, were in control of this place for a very long time. Some of their followers escaped the cleanse and have tried to infiltrate recently. We've dealt with them on a case-by-case -case basis and will continue to do so. That's one of the reasons security is so tight around here and for my alliance with the wolves. You won't be living in secret as you did on your ranch, but you will have much more protection. Since the enemy knows of your existence now and your relation to some very powerful others through your daughter, I don't think you can really go back into hiding with much success, I'm sorry to say. Essentially, this is your best bet for staying safe and continuing your good work. Herman nodded slowly. We've come to that realization ourselves. It will be a long time before the other side forgets about us, so we're going to have to come up with a new solution. My first impression is that this place is way too grand for the likes of us. Herman chuckled self-consciously. But otherwise, the setup is ideal. Then, if you're finished with your repast, Marco stood from the table, we should probably get on with the tour. There's a lot to see. They spent the next two hours traveling as a group from place to place around the estate. Their guests seemed very impressed with the work that was ongoing to restore the house and grounds, and they asked good questions that impressed Crystal and Marco both. Herman and Marilissa seemed especially interested in the outbuildings. There were several that were empty at the moment, and the couple seemed to think that they were suitable for studio space. In my youth, Marco said at one point, I knew a mage who specialized in metalsmithing. He made common items, such as shoes for special horses, that would protect them and even heal them in certain circumstances, as well as things like knives and swords that could help protect their bearers from evil. I have always wondered if that kind of thing was still practiced in these modern days. If you ever come across such a person, I would be very willing to build a forge here on the estate. Just something to keep in mind. When they returned to the house, Marco and Crystal showed their guests to their rooms so they could freshen up before dinner. Then Marco and Crystal went down to the office and looked over the maps for a bit, discussing some of the ideas Herman and Marilissa had been tossing around for the outbuildings. I think this could really work out well, Marco told Crystal as they sat at the conference table in the otherwise empty office. What do you think of Sonny's parents? I really like them, Crystal admitted, and Sonny is as nice in person as she was over the video. Her mate is totally devoted to her and I like him too, though he's very quiet. Sonny was blessed when Marilissa and Herman adopted her. I think they'd do well here if they want to stay. And I like the idea of this place becoming a refuge for magical folk who need time away from their normal lives. Marco nodded. I agree. I think it's a good use for the place and all that protective magic happening here will help strengthen the wards and protections on the place. It's a good solution. Sunny finished putting her clothes away and turned to her mate. She walked into his arms and hugged him close, resting her head on his muscular shoulder. Feeling happy, she sighed. I think this is going to work for my parents. The place is gorgeous and Crystal is a doll. What do you think? Sonny asked Den, hoping he agreed. It felt like everything was finally falling into place, but she didn't want to take anything for granted. I think Marco is a very dangerous being. 
but he's totally devoted to your cousin, which makes him manageable, Den said, surprising her. What do you mean by that? I thought he was great. Sonny pulled back to look into Den's eyes. I talked to a few people about Marco, and he's a mysterious character. I've heard things, but now, seeing him in the daylight, I'm not sure what to think. Let's just say I have more questions than answers. Sonny would have asked what he meant, but there was a knock at their door, and she stepped out of his embrace to go to the main room and answer it. Her folks were on the other side, and she invited them in. The suite had a main room fit for entertaining with a couch and several chairs off to one side. They sat down, and it was clear that her parents wanted to talk the situation over with her. Her mother spoke first. This place is gorgeous, Marilissa said. Would you mind if we took Marco up on his offer to run our school here? Not at all, she assured them. Above all, I want you two to be safe and happy, and you'd be near Crystal, and Den and I could visit all the time. Who knows? Maybe we could stay here sometimes if Marco was serious about keeping a wraith presence on the estate. Den would be well suited to that kind of assignment, and it would mean we could spend time here with you. Oh, Sonny, my dear child, Marilissa had tears in her eyes. I think this could really work out for the best. I was so afraid we'd never find a place after our home was desecrated, but this... She gestured around at the grandness of the suite. It's just so pretty here, and I feel we could do good work here helping reclaim the estate for the light. I think you could too. Sonny was happy in that moment. Her parents had found a safe place to land that would not only give them purpose, but challenge them as well. Best of all, it was with one of her newfound relatives, which meant forging closer ties with the dryad side of her nature. These were good things, very good things. Now if she could only discover what Den had been driving at with his mysterious words about Marco. They all ate together in the dining room a short time later. The wolf pack had been very welcoming to Crystal's new family, and the Alpha had joined them so he could meet everybody, which was a nice touch. He and Den were sitting next to each other and talking quietly while Marco discussed renovation plans with Herman. Their ladies were talking about wedding plans. Marco has a large extended family and they all want to come for the wedding. His niece, Mina, is arranging everything. Or rather, her people are doing a lot of the work. She's designing the dress, though, and approving all the other designs. Crystal blushed a bit and laughed. I never expected to have a designer wedding, but it looks like that's what I'm going to wind up with. Mina can be a bit uh, overwhelming. Mina? She's a designer? Sonny asked. Philomena Modesti is Marco's niece. Sorry, he just calls her Mina. Crystal admitted. She read dawning understanding on both Sonny and Marilissa's faces. Wow, Sonny said, sitting back. That's some family connection. They talked over the wedding plans for another 20 minutes until the dining room started emptying out. It was Marilissa that brought up a tricky subject out of concern. Crystal knew the older woman didn't realize the can of worms she was opening but it was probably better to get this topic out in the open sooner rather than later. Crystal felt sure these people could be trusted. Aren't you going to have anything to eat, Marco? Marilissa asked innocently. Marco stilled, as did Den and the other shifters. No, madam, I do not eat, but thank you for your concern. Marco sounded casual, but Crystal knew he wasn't casual at all. I'm sorry, I don't understand. You don't eat? Not at all? Marilissa looked confused, as did Sonny. Crystal held her breath to see how Marco would deal with this and how it would go over. It's good to know my allies haven't been telling tales about me, but if you are going to live here, you need to know. I was born in 1327 in Messina, Italy, to a magical family of Strega. Many of the women in my family have strong magical abilities, and I had some measure of magic as well. When the plague came to my home, brought by ships and guided by the invisible hands of the Vinificus, I fought to keep it from spreading, 
but was injured in a battle with a vinificus mage, far from home. A blood letter came to me and offered to share her immortality with me, in thanks for saving her hometown. I accepted and became a blood letter. Eventually I returned to my family much changed, but they accepted me after realizing that I had not changed into a creature of evil. I stayed in Messina for hundreds of years, watching over my family and sister's children, and then their children, and so on. Eventually it got to be too depressing, and though I never lost touch with the family, I had to leave to find a new life for myself. You're saying... Excuse me, Herman said, his tone a bit shocked. You're saying... You're a vampire? We prefer the term bloodletter, but essentially you are correct, Marco told them, taking a sip of his wine. He had not eaten dinner, but he had been drinking wine. But you were out in the daylight, Sonny pointed out, looking confused. Yes, that is new, although I could always stand more daylight than other bloodletters. I could not allow the sun to touch my skin without severe burns, which could have led to immolation. It seems Crystal's magic has had an unexpected effect on mine, and since we have bonded, I can now walk in the sun without fear. You're a daywalker, Den said, his tone incredulous. Marco nodded at him. The only one I know of. In fact, I thought it was just a myth, but it appears I was wrong. That is wine you're drinking, right? Herman asked, skeptical. Marco laughed. <laughs> it's just wine. For centuries now, the fermented fruit of the vine has been my only link with the sun. It is healing to my kind and the only thing we can ingest that actually helps us and does no harm. I had no idea, Marilissa said, clearly stunned. The thing is, I do not want this information to be widely known. It could be that my unique powers will be needed in the upcoming battles. I would rather the enemy underestimate me, if at all possible, Marco told them. Of course, Herman answered at once. We understand, and we won't tell a soul. He raised one hand and made a glyph in the air that glowed slightly. I swear it, he said formally. His wife followed suit, and Crystal could feel the magic in the air as the two sealed their vows with their protective magics. Thank you for that, Marco acknowledged. I hope you will be happy and prosperous here. Then you want us to move in? Marilissa asked with an edge of excitement in her tone. Certainly, Marco replied. My true nature was the only real stumbling block. And since you're okay with it, if you want to set up your school here, I would welcome it. I know Crystal does too, since that means she might get to see Sunny more often. Marco smiled and reached out to take Crystal's hand, squeezing her fingers gently. I've never had family before, and I hope we can be lifetime friends, Crystal said, feeling every word deep in her heart. Sunny had tears in her eyes. Of course, Crystal! We're family. I want to get to know you, and so do Sally, Maria, and Cecilia. That sounded awesome to Crystal, and she felt tears of happiness gather behind her eyes. Things were starting to come together for her, and it had all started with meeting Marco. He had been the one to change her life for the better. On a sunny day a few months later, Marco waited at the end of an aisle lined with friends and family. Every one of his extended family who could get here for the ceremony filled one side of the ballroom. The other was filled with the members of the local wolf pack, a healthy number of wraiths, and a quartet of dryads with their mates. Sally, Sunny, Maria, and Cece had each visited the estate to get to know Crystal, and they talked all the time by phone or video. Nobody had wanted to miss the fairy tale wedding Mina had designed. Marco looked up the aisle to find his one, wearing a confection of white accented by leafy designs embroidered in seed pearls and diamonds on white silk. The gown was one of a kind and perfect for the wood nymph that had stolen Marco's heart. 
Herman walked Crystal down the aisle. He'd become a father figure to her in the months since he and his wife had moved in and restarted their magecraft school. The headpiece Crystal was wearing had been made by a gifted metalsmith and jeweler who imbued the work with protective blessings as she worked and had gifted the tiara to Crystal as a wedding present. It glittered with emeralds and topaz in both gold and smoky shades, representing the colors of the forest. It, too, was perfect for Crystal. But it was Crystal herself who was the greatest perfection. She had whirled into Marco's life and given him so much joy he could hardly believe it. She floated to him on a wave of leafy white silk, stopping before him. Herman handed her off to Marco, but all he could see was Crystal. The ceremony passed in a blur, and then it was done. The bonds of magic that had been forged between them for the past months were only solidified by the high priestess's blessings. Bettina had shown up a few days before, much to Marco's surprise, to take his measure, as she put it. Word of the daywalker had somehow gotten to the high priestess, and she had come to see for herself what he was like. He suspected she had also come to see if he truly served the light, but there was no question of that now that he had his one. He would never stray from the righteous path as long as he had Crystal at his side and in his life. It had been Mina who had asked the high priestess to officiate at the wedding. Mina had planned to offer the blessing herself, but she knew a good opportunity when she saw one, and Bettina had agreed. After kissing his bride and walking down the aisle, Marco knew there was going to be a party the likes of which this house had not seen since its heyday in the 1800s. Mina had planned an actual ball, and they would all retire to the dining room for a celebratory meal while the chairs were removed and the ballroom was set up for dancing. Not just any dancing, but a full-scale, old-fashioned ball, complete with orchestra. Crystal felt giddy as they received congratulations from everyone at the meal. She barely ate but managed to nab a slice of the sinfully sweet cake when it was finally served. Marco watched her over the rim of his wine glass indulgently, and she couldn't wait to dance the night away in his arms. All the guests were dressed according to Mina's specifications. She'd been planning this for months and had outdone herself with the ball gowns she designed for her friends among the pack. The men, too, were resplendent in their formal evening wear. Crystal felt like she had stepped back in time, or that she was living one of her childhood fantasies. What woman didn't want to be swept off her feet by a gentleman and dance at a proper old-time ball? When dinner was over and they went back into the ballroom, the place had been transformed into a wonderland of sparkling chandeliers and waltz music. Marco led Crystal onto the floor with the mastery of a man who had done this many times before. Crystal had been learning how to dance along with the shifter women and had looked forward to this moment for weeks. Marco took her into his arms and they began dancing. It was like nothing she had dreamed. It was better, way, way better. As she had hoped, they danced the night away surrounded by friends and family. The old mansion was filled with light and laughter, as it should be. Crystal thought this was a very good beginning to the life she hoped to have with Marco, and a good new beginning for the estate. There might be tough days from time to time, but for now, all was right with her world, and the future looked very bright indeed. You've been listening to the bonus epilogue, from Night of the Nymph by Bianca Dark. The next book in the series is called Wildwood in Winter. The following book, titled The Elven Star, will bring the culmination of the Dryad storyline. For more information, you can always check out Bianca Dark's website at www.biancadark.com. That's B-I-A-N-C-A-D-A-R-C dot com.